Over the last three weeks, I've been building and promoting a new web app. But for this project, I tried something I've never done before. I recorded my screen the entire time I was working on it. And in total, I have 57 hours of footage, which includes all the coding, the designing, the marketing, and just the research for this app. The only things I didn't record was either when I was thinking about the project away from my laptop, which does happen sometimes, like maybe I'm eating or going for a walk. And there were a few times where I was really stupid and I forgot to press the record button. But I think these hours are offset by a lot of the footage, which is actually just me procrastinating. So yeah, I think 57 hours is a pretty accurate estimate of how much time I spent on this project. The original plan was to release this really epic series of time-lapse vlogs of the whole development process. Kind of like those speed painting videos, if, if you've watched that. But then I was going through the videos a few weeks ago and actually most of it is pretty boring. So instead, I just tried to accumulate it more and more and more of these videos until now when I have a decently functioning website and also some registered users. Officially, there are 42 registered users, and no, this is not just me and my friends. Uh, it's actually a very targeted group of people. It's not a lot, but I haven't spent any money on advertising it. So actually, I think I have quite a bit of useful content to jam into this video. I'm gonna show you the key moments in the development of this web app and explain to you my high-level thought process, both in terms of the tech and the business strategy. We're gonna go pretty fast. Woke up at 11 o'clock, I ain't got no job, what the hell should I do today? So ever since Dota Auto Chess became a thing, I've been wanting to stream some games, and I've been thinking about what I can do to kickstart my stream on Twitch. Then I had this idea for some software, which I thought would be pretty simple to code, and could maybe be another source of passive income for me. I was on vacation at the time, so I let it sit in my head for a few weeks, and then started working on it on June 3rd. And that's when I started recording my screen for this video. My idea was to build a service that would let you stream on multiple platforms simultaneously. As a small streamer, it's inefficient to restrict yourself to one streaming platform, when now there are multiple big ones to choose from. My service would basically be like a fork for your stream. You send your live stream to my servers, which then redirects your live stream to all the major platforms, so you're live everywhere at once. The first thing I did is Google if something like this exists, and I found a few companies that offer this. But I thought this was okay, because right now, I have an extremely unfair advantage. I'm part of the DigitalOcean Hatch program, which essentially gives startups free server hosting for one year. I thought I could use this to undercut all my competitors, because a service like this actually requires a lot of server bandwidth, since you need to process all that live video. But I did more research, and I found a company called Restream.io, which actually offers a pretty good free plan for this, and I tested it all myself to confirm that, yeah, it actually works pretty well. So I decided to scrap this idea, but I still wanted to make something for up-and-coming streamers. I did more research, and then I found some interesting threads on the Twitch subreddit. Every month, there's this official thread to help streamers find other streamers to play with. I thought this was pretty cool and something I'd probably try myself because I don't really have many friends that stream. Then, I found a bunch of Discord servers and Facebook groups, which are also there to help these small streamers network and collab with each other. I figured there should probably be a dedicated platform for all this, and then when I couldn't find it, I decided to build it myself. When I start coding a new project, I try to get things working first at the most basic level using tools that I'm familiar with. So for this website, I use Node and Express for the server, MongoDB for the database, and this really messy front end which has EJS, Bootstrap, and jQuery. I don't have much experience with React, so that's why I'm using this really old school front end stuff, but I don't think that's very important right now, even though I should probably learn it sometime in the future. I started off by making a button that lets you log in with Twitch, and I thought this would make things easier both for the users and myself as a developer, since it shortens the sign up process and also verifies that you're actually the streamer that you say you are. Later on, I'll add more login options, but Twitch is good enough to start with. Then I put together a skeleton for the site. There are three main pages, and to begin with, they look pretty trash, but first I'll show you how they look right now so you can get a better idea of the service that I'm building. There's a landing page, a page to let you edit your profile, and a page so you can browse the other streamers who are looking to collab. I didn't create any mockups for these, I just started writing the HTML and CSS right away because I'm so cool, no, because, uh, I'm just lazy and I just gradually make it better as long as I go. A good question you might have is, why don't I make the site more similar to a dating site? Where you know you punch in your profile and then it matches you with a few people and you can only see those few people so that you're more likely to actually do stuff. Well this doesn't work very well when you don't have many users on the app. And an important part of building a social website is to somehow make it useful before you have a lot of users. Unless you have a lot of money to burn, but I'm not rich. 
I made all the registered streamers on my website public. So this basically acts as free advertising for the streamers, in addition to being a networking site. I like jumping back and forth between front-end dev and back-end dev a lot. I find that front-end is good as like a mental break because it doesn't take that much brain power to adjust the fonts and the colors and stuff, but then it's still important not to make everything look like shit. I don't think it's a good idea to spend too much time on UI in the beginning because a lot of things are going to change. But at the same time, I personally just really don't like it when things are too ugly and hard to use. One thing I do a lot is copy and paste code from old projects. I also Google really, really basic shit all the time. If I stuck to my original plan of making these time-lapse devlogs, you would probably see how much I suck at web dev right now. Good thing is this is a very easy website to build, so I'm okay. I don't plan features out much in advance because I'm always changing stuff, but I'm always trying to run through in my head how the typical user is going to run through the website and then only try to work on the things that they're going to care the most about. Here I just put together an ugly ass page to show a mock list of streamers who want to collab and this is probably the most important page on the site. Obviously I gotta keep working on this, but there are a few design issues here and I wanna let it sit for a while. So instead I work on the landing page, which I know is also something I'll need to do before I launch the website. When you're building and designing at the same time, there's this strange balance where you have to make yourself stay productive in terms of the features that you complete, but you also can't just be working on useless stuff all the time. And I think this is a skill that you don't learn if you're always working as a software engineer following a spec. Maybe it would be a good idea for me to do some more product design planning, but I find that when I'm coding, I always find lazier ways to implement things, which might not follow my original plan, but doesn't really make that much of a difference to the user. For example, I would have designed this page using infinite scrolling, where the streamer profiles appear as you scroll down until there's no streamer profile left. But then I find an easy way just to put a page navigation bar at the bottom, and I don't really think this matters that much, so in the end, I think the hour or two that I save is worth it. I considered using a fancy bootstrap template for this website, but since the UI is so simple, I figured I would just write all the CSS myself instead of trying to figure out how to modify a template to make it look how I want. I'm not a great web designer, so I referred back to this Medium article I found a while ago to do some quick hacks to make the site look better. After I have all the critical features implemented, I clean up the code a little bit, fix up the error handling, and just review and think about how I wrote my code a little bit more. I still need to polish the design, but I think it's good enough that I can deploy the site. I'm not going to talk much about server admin because this is mostly just going on Google and finding the right Linux commands. I should probably learn how to use Docker at some point, but my stack is simple enough that I don't really have trouble setting it up on an Ubuntu server on DigitalOcean. I've been searching for a shooting star. I've been trying to find you in the dark. Now it's time to switch gears and start marketing. I'm not going to spend any money on the website at this point. I think ad platforms like Google Ads and Facebook Ads are good for getting consistent traffic, but right now I don't really think about the long term. I just want to know if anyone actually cares about my website. I actually think that free promotion a lot of times is better for evaluating how good your software is because if you pay enough, you can always get users, right? My product launch strategy has a three-pronged approach. My main traffic source being Reddit, and in particular, the Twitch subreddit, which has about 500k subs. I don't want to get banned for self-promotion, so I message the mods beforehand to make sure that I can actually post my stuff. I also post in some smaller subreddits like rstreaming and rmixer. My second traffic source is Discord, and there are actually many of these small streamer teams and small streamer communities on Discord. The problem is that Discord is more of a place for fast conversation, so it's not really likely that my post is going to go viral, but it's a good place to get quick and immediate feedback. It just feels kind of weird asking these people in these streamer communities and streamer networks on Discord to check out my site because the Discord channel is already there to help them mingle and network with each other. So I'm basically telling them, hey, don't use what you're using right now. I'll try out my fancier thing. It sort of leaves a bad taste in my mouth and I'm still thinking about how to effectively use Discord. My third traffic source is Facebook. And unfortunately, even though there are a lot of Facebook groups, for small streamers, a lot of them is really spammy, either just people promoting their stream links or they're doing this follow for follow stuff, which is basically like, okay, I follow you, you follow me back, everyone's happy, right? It's just a very bad place for discussion. I think Facebook in general just sucks at having discussion and I'm not sure why. 
when I'm posting about play day, I usually try to make myself sound like, oh, I'm this hobbyist coder and I'm just making this as a passion project because I really want to get into streaming. Yeah, part of it is true, but the reason why I downplay myself like this is because these communities are here to serve those little guys who are just doing things out of love. Kind of like me making these videos, right? While I'm waiting for these mods at our Twitch to let me post on their subreddit, I'm using the feedback that I gather from small communities to improve my website and fix bugs. I want to talk about this really lazy QA process that I have, and this will probably get me fired at a bunch of companies. But anyways, when I launch a product, I never write unit tests or integration tests. I just click through stuff manually, or I just read through the code and think about potential bugs in my head. Then I release the product to a small number of users, and these users are basically my guinea pigs. I check my server logs and my database, and usually I can see a bunch of bugs that my early users encounter, even if they don't report them to me, and usually they don't report them to me. I like this process for two reasons. First, it lets me fix the critical bugs first, because these are likely the bugs that my early users will encounter first. And second, it lets me do the user testing and the quality assurance at the same time. The only thing is that you have to make sure your product isn't so, so sucky that it's unusable and you can't even evaluate any business analytics because no one can use the product. I've posted in enough online communities now that I think it's time for me to add some new feature to my website just because I get a bit antsy if I do all this marketing stuff and I'm not coding. It kind of makes me feel unproductive though. I don't think that's the correct way to think. I just, whatever. I had a simple idea to feature a random streamer of the hour on the homepage. And my reasoning is that for these shy and introverted streamers like me, maybe reaching out and collaborating is too scary. So instead, how about just give them some free promotion by having their live stream on the front page of my website. This is easy to code and I don't think it has any major drawbacks so I put it in. I don't mind that this feature isn't directly related to Clouds because right now I just want to build up that user base of up and coming streamers and this feature serves the same audience. So I posted a few more times talking about this but it did not make a difference. Then I tried to leverage my YouTube to get more people to sign up. If you look at my old videos, you'll see that I still have a few of my auto chess videos up and I figured well, I know some of you guys are still subscribed for the auto chess content so how about I help promote these up and coming streamers by asking them to give me some feedback on my website and then incorporating that feedback plus some short clip of their stream into this video I'm making right now. But nobody wanted to do this apparently. I guess I'm just not famous enough. So to this day, I still haven't received permission to post on the Twitch subreddit. I tried posting on the R Twitch Discord. And I also tried posting on the R Twitch subreddit without linking my website. So just asking people to DM me if they're interested. Both of these got deleted by the same mod. I don't blame that guy. If I was the mod, I would also be trying to keep the community pristine. But I gotta figure something out because this is my biggest opportunity for free marketing. I think that either I have to somehow make myself sound less like a salesman or I have to change up the value proposition a little bit. Maybe a little bit of both. I'm not happy at all with the user acquisition. If I was working on a project like this a few years ago, I would be like, oh, this sucks. I should give up and do something else. But now I try to think a little bit more long term, and here I do think there's something interesting. Let's look at the analytics. In total, I have 165 unique users visiting my site. Google Analytics does have a breakdown for the traffic sources, but this is definitely inaccurate because it says I have mostly direct referrals, which is people typing in playdate.gg in their browser, and that can't be right. It doesn't show any from Discord. Google Analytics just isn't able to track it for whatever reason, and it puts it as a direct referral. Also, the traffic from Reddit is way too low. I know that this can't be true because I had a bunch of signups shortly after I posted on our streaming for the first time. So that was even more than six signups. So there's no way I only have six unique users from Reddit. It's possible that some of those Reddit users typed in playdate.gg since I did put it in the title of the Reddit post, but I still don't think that this can be the right number. Out of these 165 visitors, 42 signed up via Twitch or Mixer, and 22 went on to publish their profile. Right now, I can't measure whether or not any collabs are actually happening, but this is a problem for later.
To get to this point, I posted on 10 Facebook groups, 8 subreddits, and a few discords. I actually don't know how many discords I posted in because those mods delete my posts so quickly. The main problem right now is that none of my posts are getting any significant amount of engagement relative to the size of the community that I'm posting it in. And this isn't that surprising because a lot of these communities are pretty spammy. But even so, I should be doing better than what I'm getting right now. At this point, I don't really think it's important to care too much about user retention because the click-through rate on the link in my post is just way too low. The good news is that I have many communities that either I haven't been able to leverage effectively or I haven't even tried yet. So there should be a way to get more users onto my site. I'll just have to reposition my product in some way. I'm not really sure how, but fortunately, I can ask those 42 streamers who signed up for my website. I definitely want to make another video on Playdate, but I'm not really sure what's the best format to do it in. This video literally took three and a half weeks of recording and I just threw away most of the footage. I'm also planning out some other tech and entrepreneurship content because I do want to upload a little bit more consistently and I've actually filmed the next video already. So I promise it's not going to take another two months before I upload. I will be uploading the next video next week. One last thing, I'll finally be starting my stream with some Dota Underlords and Teamfight Tactics. I haven't figured out my schedule or my streaming setup yet. But if you're interested in collabing with me, or just want to chill and play some games, well, I heard that there's this really cool website that you can sign up and find me on.